Polycarp was the Bishop of Smyrna from the early to middle second century AD. He himself was discipled by the Apostle John and heard the testimony of others who had seen Jesus Christ personally during their youth. Polycarp provided a wealth of information from those who had seen Jesus to future generations of Christians in the second century. The Church of Smyrna had a biblical history as she was directly addressed by John with six other churches in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation in AD 95. Revelation 2, 8 through 11, indicates that Christians in Smyrna had already undergone some tribulation because of their faith and were about to face a more intense persecution soon. In AD 107, Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, visited Polycarp in Smyrna as Ignatius was on his way to Rome to be martyred. Ignatius soon after wrote a letter to Polycarp, encouraging him in his pastoral duties to call all people to be saved, praying for all, bearing with all, and preserving unity in the church even among those who are more difficult. The letter also encouraged Polycarp to stand firm against those who spread heresy and to give proper attention to specific groups in the church, like widows, slaves, men, women, single people, and married people. Ignatius wrote as an older bishop to Polycarp, a younger bishop, to encourage him in his ministry in Smyrna. At the same time, Ignatius wrote a letter to the Smyrnaeans to promote unity among Christians in Polycarp's church and warn them against the evils of docetism and related heresy. Docetists claimed that Jesus was fully God but only seemed to be physical, thus denying his full humanity. Exercising good behavior, remaining unified with each other through the bishop, and repelling heresy were three of the most common themes of the writings of the Apostolic Fathers, or those who personally had been taught by the Apostles. If Polycarp was like a father to the Christians in Smyrna, then Ignatius's letter to the Smyrnaeans must have sounded like grandfatherly advice to them. One known event in Polycarp's life was his visit to Rome with their Archbishop Anicetus to discuss exactly when Easter should be celebrated in the churches. The Eastern churches were celebrating Easter on the 14th of Nisan, or the same day that the Jews celebrated the Passover, no matter what day of the week it was. The Western churches were celebrating Easter on the first Sunday following the Passover because it was the day of the week on which Jesus rose from the dead. When the two bishops could not agree, they agreed to disagree and allow each region of the church to celebrate Easter when each saw fit. While Polycarp was in Rome, he also was approached by the Gnostic heretic Marcion, who asked if Polycarp recognized him. Polycarp answered, I recognize, I recognize the son of Satan. While Polycarp spoke kindly to Western Christians who disagreed with the traditions of Eastern Christians, he had no patience with recognized heretics. During an athletic festival at Smyrna in AD 155, Polycarp was arrested, tried, and martyred for his faith. The church in Smyrna wrote an account of the proceedings to the church in Philomelium in Phrygia. This was the first detailed account of a martyrdom in the early church since Luke's account of Stephen's martyrdom 120 years earlier in Acts 6 through 8. Christians in Smyrna were being threatened with execution if they did not worship the emperor. Following the martyrdom of Germanicus, an elderly Smyrnian Christian, the mob cried out for Polycarp to be tried too. Members of the church convinced Polycarp to hide at first. However, after a week of hiding in a few different places, a young boy, under torture, reported Polycarp's location, who then simply awaited to be arrested by a local official named Herod. Polycarp was tried before the preconsul, Statius Quadratus, in the city stadium before a mob of Jews and heathen hecklers. When the preconsul asked Polycarp to swear by the fortune of Caesar and revile Christ, Polycarp answered, 86 years I have served him, and he never did me wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king and my savior? When the preconsul threatened Polycarp with a martyr's fire, Polycarp answered, You threaten me with a fire that burns for an hour and after a little while is extinguished, but you do not know about the fire of the coming judgment of eternal punishment reserved for the ungodly. But why do you wait? Bring on what you will. A herald announced to the mob that Polycarp admitted to being a Christian, and the mob cried out for Polycarp to be burned at the stake. The mob gathered wood to be used in Polycarp's execution by burning, 
but as they approached him with nails to nail him to the wood, as was their custom, he said, Leave me as I am, for he who gives me strength to endure the fire will also enable me, without your fastening me by nails, to remain without moving in the pile. The mob did not nail him, but merely tied his hands like a sheep to be sacrificed. He then prayed a beautiful prayer and said, Amen, and the fire was lit. However, the fire, though blazing around him fully, miraculously could not seem to burn his body. This so frustrated the mob that the executioner stabbed Polycarp's body with a dagger to kill him. Witnesses claimed a dove flew out from his body, and the amount of blood that poured out was so great that it put out the fire. This left the mob wondering how significant the difference was between the bodies of those who were Christians and those who were not. As Christian friends of Polycarp sought to remove his body for a proper burial, the Jews among the mob believed the friends intended to worship Polycarp's corpse. The executioner then burned the body, leaving only the bones behind to be put in a fitting place. Polycarp was at the epicenter of the early church in that he had heard the testimony of those who saw Jesus Christ personally, including the apostles and especially the apostle John. Polycarp was the faithful bishop of Smyrna from Ignatius's visit in AD 107 until Polycarp's martyrdom in 155. He left a clear testimony of an apostolic father who taught and lived out proper behavior and theology. The most noteworthy of Polycarp's disciples was Irenaeus, who became one of the church's leading defenders of the faith in Lyons. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and share, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos.